if you enjoy what we're doing and want to become one of our tribe, then go ahead and click subscribe. And if you choose to be PC with D, remember, it's always free. And if you give that little bell icon a ring, you'll be notified of our next video and you won't miss a thing. And if you choose to give this video a like, won't you please share it as well so we can give Christianity a bigger mic. I love each and every one of you. And the things I'm about to say here this morning, they are always to help you, never to hurt you. And any lesson I give, it's given to me before it's given to anybody. Our lesson this morning, I'd like to thank Dad for singing that song about Anywhere we go, as long as Christ is with us, we can safely go. This morning, we're going to kind of talk a little bit about traveling. And our lesson this morning is simply titled, Faith Moving Forward. Now, talked a little bit to Dad about this, kind of came up with this idea. And of course, me and Brandy being on the road, back and forth between the hospital and home, we put in a lot of miles and you do a lot of traveling, and for some reason I got to thinking about the idea for this lesson. We've all been in a place in our life where we've been traveling somewhere, and you got stuck in a traffic jam. Is that not one of the worst feelings of all? You're going along, everything's fine, everything's completely normal, you're on task, you're on schedule, and then you look ahead, and it's just a wall of vehicles, and nobody's moving. It just immediately changes everything, doesn't it? Changes your perspective on the day, changes your schedule, changes everything. And then a lot of times if they have to do something where they back people up when you're stopped, that's really a wrenching feeling, isn't it? When you're going in the wrong direction and they have you backing up or going in reverse. Or maybe you're just sitting there still, stuck in place, and no one's moving. It's an awful feeling. But when things finally start to get going, even if it's at a crawl, even if you start going at five or 10 miles an hour, you feel better, don't you? That's a beautiful feeling when you see those cars out of you begin to move because you begin to move and things get to feel a little more right. Why is that? It's because we're in motion, right? We're in a forward motion. We're moving towards our destination towards accomplishing what we wanted to do, or best of all, getting home. And I got to thinking about that. Is that not a perfect allegory for our Christian life? You know, sometimes in our life we do go in reverse. Sometimes we're stuck in neutral. But our life and our faith, more importantly, should always be moving forward. And if it is, we're on the right track. God's Word tells us about this so eloquently, and Paul tells us in 2 Corinthians chapter 4 and verse 16, For which cause we faint not, though the outward man perishes, the inward man is renewed day by day. That's a beautiful verse, isn't it? And that pretty well sums up the way our faith should be. For which cause we should never faint, we should never stop in our service, in our desire to want to worship God. And though we age, though we get older, day by day, year by year, things fail us. Maybe our health, maybe things get taken from us, loved ones, we face tragedies. All these things that challenge our faith. But for which cause, if we faint not, and our outward man is going to perish, things are going to be taken from us, that inward man, your soul, your faith, should be renewed every single day. Every day you wake up and your eyes open, and you draw in another breath because the Lord has allowed it, is that not a blessing? Should we not be renewed every single day of our life as a Christian? Should we not be able to turn, even if it's just reading a single scripture or a devotional or something in your life every single day, should that not renew your soul? It should, shouldn't it? Yes, we're going to age. We're going to get older. Things are going to be taken from us 
in this journey, in this little thing we call life. But one thing that should be renewed every day by day is that inward man, your faith, your soul, and your belief in God. Because if it's not, it's not moving forward, is it? If your inward man is not renewed, I love that word renewed, if it's not renewed every single day of your life, it's stuck in place, isn't it? Or it's going backwards. It's not in a forward motion. Yes, God's word again tells us go all the way back to the Old Testament. Deuteronomy chapter 4 and verse 29. For where we come from, or from hence, if we seek the Lord, if God is the one that we seek, we will find him. Here's the kicker. If we do it with our heart and soul. Again, does that not say it all? If where you're coming from, where your heart is coming from in a motion, a forward motion to seeking and pursuing God in your life, if that's what you seek, you will find it. If you do it with your heart and soul. If you're not just someone that treats your faith like you're going through the motions. Oh, well, it's Sunday again. I guess I better throw on those clothes and go sit for the hour and put in my time. And then when it's over, I can punch out and get back to Monday through Saturday doing what I want to do. Folks, if we treat our life and our faith like that, it's not in a motion forward, is it? It's either going in reverse, drifting away from God, or it's stuck in place. And that's a dangerous place to be. Stuck in neutral and never moving forward. Yes, if where we come from and what we seek is the Lord, if that's what we pursue, we are going to find it if we do it with our heart and soul. Remember how Jesus Christ says, seek and you shall find, knock and it'll be opened unto you. We have to make the effort, don't we? You have to be the one in your life every single day that seeks God. You have to be the one pursuing him. You have to be the one to answer the door because the Lord is knocking every single day. So folks, this morning we're going to look to see if the state we're in is a state of moving forward. And is our faith ever pursuing and ever moving forward towards our Heavenly Father? Having said that, we go into our first point. Number one, I have written here, sometimes in our life our faith is going in reverse. And like I said, that's an awful feeling, isn't it? To be in that traffic jam and then everybody has to start going back. You're exactly moving away from where you want to be. And oh, how many times in our life do we do that even with our faith unto God? How many times in life have we maybe been baptized? We've said that we've taken God on in our life, but for some reason we cling to the person that we used to be. We cling to the life that we used to have, the things that we used to enjoy, the things that we used to do, and we can't let them go. Maybe it's a mistake that we made in the past. So many things that lead our life to going in the wrong direction, lead our faith into going into reverse. I'm going to look at an example here that Jesus Christ gave, sometimes an overlooked one. We know one of these verses very well, but one of these sometimes we overlook several of these. You go to Luke, the ninth chapter, and you start with verse 59, and we're going to go through verse 62. Here we have a very interesting situation. A certain person comes up to Jesus Christ, and they say, Lord, I will follow you, but first... Let me go and bury my father or bury my loved one. Jesus responds by saying, let the dead bury their dead, but go and teach the kingdom. It's an interesting thing, isn't it? A lot of folks look at that. Now, Christ isn't being harsher and saying, well, let somebody else go and bury your loved one. It's not what he's saying, is he? Back in these times, if you knew the Jewish tradition, when someone died, a funeral service took weeks and months. It was a very long process to finally putting someone to rest. 
And what Jesus is simply saying is someone that can't let go of their past or the person they used to be can't truly come and follow me now because your heart isn't with me. You see, the Lord's work needs done every day. Kind of goes along with our Bible study pretty well, doesn't it? You can't say that I put in my time on Sunday and then the rest of the time I'm not going to serve the Lord. I love his response there. Let the dead bury their dead, but come and teach the kingdom. Do the Lord's work now. I need you with me. I should be what matters most in your life. That's what we professed, isn't it? On the day that we were baptized and the day that we said, I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. The day I declared that I was going to give my life over to God from that day forward. It's the day that we made the proclamation, isn't it? That we were going to serve the Lord. Did we take those words seriously or not? And that's what Christ is saying. If you say you're going to follow me, if you say you desire and want to follow me, then follow me. Then do my work because it needs done now. Don't worry about yesterday at the expense of today. Don't worry about the things that you used to cling on to, the person that you used to be. Start focusing on who you are and who I need you to be. We go on, though. It doesn't just stop there. Another one comes up to him. And we go on there, and the next person comes up and says, Lord, I'll follow you, but first let me go home and bid those farewell. And then we get the verse that we know so well in verse 62 of Luke 9. No man having put his hand to the plow and looking back is fit for the kingdom of God. That's a very vivid illustration Christ gives us, isn't it? But again, we have another person coming up, don't they? Well, Lord, I want to follow you. Lord, I, I could follow you, but first let me do this thing I want to do. Kind of the way we live our life sometimes, isn't it? Well, Lord, I, I know that this person needs a phone call because they're sick. I know this person needs visiting in the hospital because they are in very bad shape. But first, Lord, let me do what I need to do. I know there's something that needs done. Lord, I know your word needs read so I can grow and not spiritually starve. But you see, the football game or the baseball game is on tonight. I really don't want to miss it. My favorite team's playing. Not really following the Lord the way we need to, are we? No man having put his hand to the plow and looking back is fit for the kingdom of God. You know, there's things in our life things in our past that we can't let go of. A lot of times in life, folks will have things that they used to do, and once they become a Christian, they can't let them go. That old person was never truly buried, was it? I love how Paul tells us when you go to Romans, the sixth chapter, when we're talking about being baptized around verse four, it talks about when we are baptized, we are buried with him. Great illustration. That old person's dead. That old person that you used to be with your old desire should have been renewed. And I love at the end of that verse, it says, and after we're baptized, we should, double underline that word should, we should rise to walk in newness of life. But that's the word, isn't it? Should. Does every single person that was ever baptized in life walk the straight and narrow the way they should? No. Does every single person that says that they believed in Jesus Christ at one time in their life and went under that watery baptism, went under for the right reasons? Sadly, no. We should rise to walk in newness of life. You see, there's a lot of times in our life, even as Christians, where we're looking in that rear view where we're thinking about the things that we used to do, where we're stuck and clinging to the life that we used to have because we've never really cut it away. We've never really moved forward in our faith toward Jesus Christ. But the day that we finally do, what a day that is. 
The day that we finally say, Christ, God is the most important thing to me. Today is the day. Today is the day I'm going to start living for him instead of me. You see, selfishness has no place in faith. And that's what Christ was reminding these people of. You need to let go. Let the dead bury their dead, but come and follow me and preach and teach the kingdom. Don't worry about bidding farewell. Come and follow me now because nobody looking back is fit to look forward. Nobody having put their hand to the plow and looking back is fit for the kingdom of heaven. And nobody that lives in their past can have me in their future. Is that the kind of life that we lead in our Christian life? And how about forgiveness? I got to thinking about this. Is this not one of the things that people live in the past for? How many times, even as Christians, do we hold on to grudges? Do we hold on to hurt feelings? Do we hold on to wrongs that people have done to us in our past and we can't let them go? But what does Jesus Christ, once again, our Savior, tell us in Matthew chapter 6, verses 14 and 15? For if you forgive, if you forgive men their trespasses, your heavenly Father will forgive you. But if you forgive men not their trespasses, neither will your heavenly Father forgive you. That's one that's going to Keep a lot of people looking in the rear view, isn't it? Even Christians. How many times in life have maybe you attended a congregation and two members maybe didn't get along or had a disagreement maybe years ago? And looking back on it, probably one of the most silly reasons. And they'll sit on opposite sides of the church, not talk to each other, not shake hands, get in the car and go their separate ways at the end of services. Is that anywhere close to what our Savior is telling us in verses 14 and 15? Is that anywhere close to cutting away the past? To forgiving and living? To letting go and letting God? It isn't, is it? And the saddest thing of all, if we live in that state, if we remain in that state, our Heavenly Father is not going to forgive us. What an awful thing, isn't it? If you forgive, you'll be forgiven. But if you don't, you won't. What a sad thing to take a knee on Judgment Day and answer for all the things we did or didn't do in our life and the thing that cost you your soul is the fact that you couldn't let go of the past. You couldn't forgive in your heart and let go of the wrongs that were done to you and let your heavenly Father make things right. Just as he tells us in Romans 12, Vengeance is mine. I, I will repay, saith the Lord. It's not up to us to seek revenge, to get revenge. It's up to God to make things right. And it's up to us to let go and let Him do so in our life. Yes, so many times in life talking about folks going in reverse and their faith going in the wrong direction, backing up, holding on to things of the past. Forgiveness has got to be one of the roughest things and one of the easiest things that puts us in that state where we're going in the wrong direction, drifting away from God because we can't let go. And you know, one of the hardest per people to forgive and one of the most overlooked parts of this is ourself. You know, a lot of times we think about this and if you forgive men their trespasses, how about forgiving yourself? Paul says in Romans 3 and 23, for all have come short of the glory of God. Every single one of us in this life are not perfect. Every single one of us that bears the name of Christian are going to sin, are going to make mistakes. And the hardest person a lot of times in life to forgive is yourself. But if we don't, we're living in the past. 
If we don't let go and let our God forgive us of those sins and move forward, we're never going to move truly forward in our faith. We're going to be stuck going in reverse. Is our life, is our faith going backwards right now? That leads us to our next point. Not only sometimes does our faith move backwards, but just as dangerously and sadly sometimes our faith is stuck in neutral. That's a bad place too, isn't it? Sometimes in our life our, we look at the past and we look at the mistakes we've made. We can't let go of things. We cling on to the person we used to be. But just as dangerously sometimes we get complacent in our Christian life too, don't we? Sometimes we get in the point where we just kind of do go through the motions or put in a minimal effort. And what a horrible place that is to be. As I said, we've all been in that traffic jam. We've all been in that car that's stuck in place, that's not moving, that's watching the world. And that's a dangerous place to be with our faith. God tells us in His Word about this and James tells us in James chapter 1, verse 22. 22. Be ye doers of the Word and not hearers only, or you deceive your own self. Again, a verse that says it all, doesn't it? James says if you're someone that comes every Sunday morning and you hear a word of gospel preached, if you listen to the Bible study, if you just go through and kind of mouth the words to songs and you go through the motions, you're a hearer only, you're not a doer. And if you're not a doer, if your faith is stuck in neutral and you're not moving forward, you're deceiving your own self. You're lying to yourself and thinking that coming through the door and just sitting and filling the seat is good enough. It's a scary thing, isn't it? And listen to this awesome illustration that James goes on to use in describing that kind of life. He says that if you are this kind of person, moving forward, James 1, 22 to 24, if you are a person that's only a hearer and not a doer, you are like a person that looks at themselves in a mirror, sees the things that you need to change, but when you walk away, you forget what manner of person you were. Well, that's something we all do, isn't it? You get up in the morning, you look in the mirror, it doesn't lie, does it? What you see in that mirror is who you are. Imperfections and all. You might see a few wrinkles in your face. A few wears and tears from the tolls of time. You might see some scars that remind you of things that you've been through and sustained in your life. You might even talk to yourself in the mirror. Today I'm going to do this. I'm going to try to do that. But then when we walk away from that mirror, sometimes we forget what we saw. Sometimes we forget what we told ourselves. And sometimes, even sadder, we're complacent just to let it be out of sight and out of mind. And that's what James is reminding us of here. If you're the kind of Christian, if you're the kind of person that in your faith is stuck in neutral, you're complacent in that faith. You're the person that comes through and hears the Word but doesn't put it into practice. You're the same as the person that goes and tells yourself all the things that you need to do and that you need to change and sees the things that you need to change, but when you walk away from that mirror, you forget everything. And you decide to do nothing. Happy to be stuck where you are. Happy to change nothing about your life. Or have your faith move forward. It's kind of a scary place to be, isn't it? A lot of times we think about one of the scariest places to be as a Christian is the place where you're drifting away from God. Where you're moving in the wrong direction, opposite from Him, but just as dangerous as the person who thinks you're close to God, but you're stuck in place. You're not moving towards Him. 
You're not advancing. You're not growing. You're not pursuing God. You're just happy to be where you are. Yes, sometimes in our life, our faith goes in reverse. But also sometimes in our life, something that we need to think about and we need to do our absolute best is to make sure we're not stuck in neutral. That we're not complacent with the life that we have. That we're always moving towards our heavenly goal. Always moving towards getting closer to our God. And folks, that leads us to the end. Number three is our faith moving forward. This is where we want to be, like we talked about in that traffic jam. Sometimes when you go in reverse, it's one of the most gut-wrenching things because you're moving away from where you need to be. Even more frustrating and even more awful is to be stuck, not moving anywhere, stuck in place. But what a relief it is to finally start moving towards your goal. Finally start moving in the right direction. Finally start advancing and trying to get home. And it's the same thing in our faith. Jesus Christ tells us as part of the Beatitudes in Matthew 5 and verse 6 that blessed is the one that does hunger and thirst after righteousness because they're the ones that's going to be filled. I love that little word do. Blessed are they that do hunger and thirst after righteousness. Blessed is the one who has the desire to move forward. Blessed are you going to be in your faith, in your soul, in your life when you decide that you're going to pursue God, that you're going to pursue Jesus, that you're going to pursue being a better part of yourself. Because when you do, if you have that desire, that hunger and thirst, you're going to be filled. The ones that are starving are the ones that have no desire. The ones whose life's going in reverse. Or the one whose life is stuck in neutral. Or they've put their life in park and happy to be there. But blessed are you if you've taken on the kind of life, the kind of mentality, the kind of desire in your life to truly hunger and thirst to want to be closer to God. Blessed are they that do hunger and thirst for righteousness because you're going to find it. And listen to this again. This has been a lesson of analogies, but they're beautiful. God's Word is full of so many of them that help us. And Peter gives us another one talking about our faith. He says in 1 Peter chapter 2 and verse 2, As newborn babes desire the sincere milk of the Word that you may grow thereby. What a beautiful analogy once again, isn't it? Peter says that you as a Christian, you as having faith in God, need to be as a newborn babe that desires milk. Boy, they're going to let you know, aren't they? If you've ever been around a newborn baby, you know that when it's time to eat, it's time to eat. And they're going to let you know, aren't they? They're going to start crying. They're going to start wailing. Why? Because they desire to be filled. They desire that milk. And Peter says that in our Christian life, that's exactly how we need to be. In our Christian life, you need to have the desire to want to be righteously fed. It's up to you to move your faith forward. It's up to you to have the desire to get closer to God. It's up to you to take His hand and walk with Him. It's up to you to grab it. That we may grow thereby. I love that. That you may grow. The only way you're going to grow spiritually is to make the effort. The only way you're going to grow closer to God is to take the steps. The only way you're going to know who He is and who He wants you to be is to read His Word and live by it. And if we do, our faith is moving forward ever mile by mile, year by year of our life towards getting home towards a heavenly home. Yes, in the beginning we talked about who we should be every day of our life. For which cause we faint not, though the outward man perishes, the inward man is renewed day by day. Yes, guys, in our life we're going to die. 
In our life one day, we are all going to pass from this earth that the good Lord and our Savior don't come first. That outward man's going to perish. But if we're renewing that inward man every single day, we're going to have a life that never ends. We're going to have a life that is eternal and a life that's renewed forever. Is that the kind of life we're pursuing? Is our faith right now moving forward towards God? Yes, sometimes in our life we go in reverse. And sometimes in our life we're stuck in neutral and not willing to move anywhere. But if our faith is moving forward, we're going to lead to a life that never ends. Yes, if your God is the one that you seek, you will find him if you do it with your heart and your soul is your faith moving forward folks the lesson yours if there's anyone here this morning who's heard god's word and has been moved believe you have the chance now to let god know that you have heard his word that you do believe it you have the chance to repent of the sins you've committed in your life up to this point confess you believe jesus christ is the son of god and be baptized for the forgiveness of those sins or for some reason you feel like your life is in reverse, stuck in neutral, and you're not as close to God as you want to be, there are faithful men here to pray on your behalf that you come back and be restrengthened with your God. If you have either one of those needs, won't you come as together we stand and sing the song of invitation.